Hi, I'm Dan Rosenstark with MIDI Designer, and in this video I'm going to show you some new features of MIDI Designer Pro 2 version 2.3300, which is going to hit the App Store internationally today, April 7th, 2023. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch MIDI Designer, and uh, when I do and go into play mode, you're going to see the more button float up. And the reason for this on iPad is that Apple has taken over. You can see this real estate uh, up. Whoops. You can see this real estate up here that Apple has taken over. So the more button can't sit there anymore. We've had a bunch of solutions since iPad OS 15. Uh, but we finally have a better solution, which is swipe down. So I go into play mode. And you see the more button just disappears, floats up, and then you see uh, this swipe down for more button for more button menu. And that is how you will access the more button menu from now on. Swipe down, more button menu is there. Um, while we're talking about that, we've also eliminated the quick switch out in play mode to multitasking features. So when I swipe up now, I don't immediately leave MIDI Designer as long as I'm in play mode. I have to swipe up again to do that. So uh, this was a suggestion from Don who actually provided examples of apps that do this MIDI scope and using those we were able to uh, figure out how to do it and basically it's pretty cool. Uh, so now you can't just switch out. Now if you're in design mode uh, you can switch out immediately. Same thing is true um, for swipe down now we've taken over swipe down so if you want to get to the system stuff like up here in the top right you have to swipe down twice and then you get to the system stuff right um, so you know that's where you would do your screen recording etc and while we're mentioning that let me go into config and show another new feature for 2.3300 if we go into options uh, you can see this demo touch circles here so uh, if I shut that off now you have no idea how I'm doing what I'm doing if I'm demoing for you. Uh, turn, on turn on demo touch circles and now you can see uh, how I'm doing, what I'm doing. And uh, we originally thought this would be useful for us, but on uh, reflection, we decided that this would be useful for you as well to be able to demo things that you're doing in the app. Here's how I do this. Here's how I do that. Demo touch circles are a great way to show that. Um, now I have a layout that's set up. I'm going to go over that layout, but first let me go over uh, the connections that I have. So I've got a MIDI network, uh, a core MIDI network set up on the Mac, and I'm going to just connect to my iPad um, here. And yeah, when I do that, now connections changed, added one in MIDI Designer. So that worked out splendidly. So now I'm connected from my iPad to my Mac. And um, I've got a connection uh, on the Mac, uh, or sorry, I've got Ableton Live listening to track and remote uh, for that connection so that I can connect to node on, node off. So now you can hear what I've got mapped up. So I've got these four buttons mapped up as node on, node off, right? They're all mapped to a C4 initially. Um, and I've also got a volume knob. So triple tap the volume knob, it goes to the default value. And that's pretty much the whole setup that, uh, that I needed for, uh, before we get started. Now I'll go over what else I've done so that I can show the random knob. So I wanted to show, uh, random changing these notes, but for me to do that, the random knob cannot affect notes, it affects values. So to do that, I need to actually put a transpose control for each of these knobs. So um, these are, uh, each of these is a transpose control. So this one is, uh, you can see it's type, trans, type transpose, subtype transpose, right? Um, I'm gonna hide the label, that's relatively ugly. Same thing with this one, transpose. This one is transpose and this one is transpose and they're sub controls because that's how transpose uh, knobs, super controls work. Uh, and this is not new for this version. So if you look at their relationships or sub controls, uh, this one has this, uh, the left one has the leftmost button. This second one has uh, this button. 
third one this button and the fourth one has this fourth button so um, now when I hit my random button right I'm gonna get instead of these four notes I'm gonna get a random value random again okay so how is the random button set up go into design mode go into uh, sorry go into design mode go into the a, a new button this is a random button two things about it it's a momentary so I said it's a momentary a subtype and the second thing about it is in relationships I made it a super control and its sub controls are these four knobs which are transpose knobs right then in options as super under relationships send random value right so this here that's the only option that needs to be set and then random okay so I get some interesting atonal noise there I could have my transpose controls be different to uh, do different things uh, and get things that are more musical um, then I added some more things to this layout to show off another uh, feature here. So the first thing is, um, and then we're going to put it all together and show how it sounds. Um, the enable disable button, which is new in 2.3300. So the way that works is uh, this random button has a satellite button in its relationships. And this is its enable disable button, which is this one here, right? So again, we go to, we tap on the random button, go into relationships, go into uh, enable disable button and go to this enable random button, which is just a button. Um, this one is, is merely a toggle button. It's not a super control or anything. It's just a regular button, which could be chained, etc. cetera. Um, so now with this enabled random uh, changes these knobs with this disabled random does nothing. Right. And this could be in a super control chain, which is actually how we have it here. So I'm going to show you without random. Let's look at this play button for a second. So go into design mode. This play button has sub controls. It's got the random uh, button first. Right. Then it's got these four notes. So it's going to basically hit the random button and then hit the four notes. That's the idea. Notice this uh, order can be edited. Right which is important. Your sub controls need to go in a particular order for this thing to happen the way you want it to. Um, so now with enable random off, I get the same note. Enable random on, I get this exciting uh, atonal nonsense. Um, yeah, maybe musically it needs some work, but you can see how the features work. Um, so those are two of the big features or two of the hard to find features in um, MIDI Designer Pro 2 2.3300. Um, now I'm going to show uh, two other features. So one is uh, snap to value. So you can snap to default value. You can also snap sub controls to value, but we allow shorter times. So I think this is pretty cool and it worked out nicely. Um, so I'm just gonna go into this volume knob and go into advanced, whoops, this volume knob, go into advanced and go to uh, snap to default value, which you can see here, right? Um, so I'm going to go to uh, make it five milliseconds. So we have really small values like two milliseconds, one millisecond, two. So we're going to show what five milliseconds sounds like. So now if I, when I let go, it goes back really fast. And if you watch the MIDI log, you'll see that it, uh, it produces a lot of values. So it's, we're moving pretty fast with the timers in there. Um, so now Yeah, so you get some really interesting things with that snap to default values with the smaller values. Um, this is a cool option. We're excited to see what people do with this, to see what people do with randomized, to see what people do with enable, disable. Um, 
one feature that I'm not going to show is MIDI message feedback. It's a huge feature. Uh, it opens up all kinds of possibilities for our content creators. And uh, if you're interested in that, check out the QA site. Um, there's a discussion of that. And it's in, of course, the release notes. Um, one thing I wanted to show, or the last thing I wanted to show, because it's a little bit hard to know how to get to, is uh, we've got this multi-line label here at the bottom. And the problem, and this was brought up by Don uh, and other people, that uh, the multi-line label doesn't look like the other fonts in the app. And that's true because it's not a bold font. So we basically just enabled a display option here. You go to display options, bold, and uh, hit apply. And now you've got it looking like other labels in the app. And the cool thing is it even sizes like other labels. So right now it looks pretty much uh, exactly like enable random there. Um, and that's beneficial for consistency. It's not, uh, oh, also you can do all kinds of things like uh, adjust the LED color. Yeah, adjust the LED color, uh, adjust the alpha. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's cool stuff uh, with multi-line labels. Let's see what else. Um, so th most of the rest of the release is either focused on preparing us for the future, which is we're going to uh, bring the iPhone experience uh, somewhat to parity with the iPad and Mac experience. That's first. And the second thing that this release does that you can see is the Mac release has a lot of polish, a lot of enhancements, and a lot of pain points were removed. So uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, but that's about it for the uh, demo, or it's not really a demo, but a kind of walkthrough of 2.3300. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks to my team, to uh, Kenyon for uh, all the things. Uh, thanks to the uh, content creators who are sharing their layouts, the people who are performing with MIDI Designer and asking good questions, uh, and everybody everywhere who's talking about MIDI designer every single day on the web. We get the mentions from all over and it's really exciting to see this movement go forward and we're excited to see where we go in the next three to six months uh, with MIDI Designer Pro 2. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.